It's its energy from what you eat. Eat high energy foods. That's fat. Be in fat burning mode often. And eat happy things that are healthy. So that's grass-fed meat. That means you don't want to eat a cow that was tortured and fed all soy and corn because it has hormones in it you don't want to eat and it has fats in it you don't want to eat. Before we get into the, to using your body, I'm going to give you a few hints. Butter will satisfy you and keep you going all day long. The problem is a lot of people fly. This is a soap dish. It costs 99 cents. When you put butter in a soap dish, it looks like soap. In fact, you could even argue legally with anyone who wanted to say otherwise that you use it to cleanse your skin. Therefore, it is soap because soap is made of fat mixed with lye. You can carry this in your carry-on luggage. Even if you don't check your bags, you can bring it onto an airplane and it's legal. And then you've got basically a half a pound of butter. That'll keep you going if you ration it for at least a week. I do that. I went to Asia. I brought a pound of butter with me. It wasn't the only fat that I ate by a long shot, but it meant I could have butter in my coffee every morning. I could skip breakfast. The other quick and dirty thing, eggs. You don't have to cook them. You crack them into a glass and you take them Rocky style. If you need protein, it takes no time at all. They taste basically like milk. You just need to get over the thing in your head that says, ew. And if that doesn't work, the coffee maker in your room will make boiling water. So brew just water with no coffee in it, put two eggs in there, let them sit in hot water for a while, you get soft boiled eggs in your hotel room. I never waste time on going out to breakfast unless it's a meeting. It also saves me 25 bucks that I would have spent on a buffet that was full of crappy foods. I get to put that towards the steak and lobster dinner on my expense report. It's not a bad deal. If I'm not in business meetings or if I'm in flight, these are the primary foods. Sockeye, salmon, it's smoked. People on the airplane don't like when you eat it. I don't really care. I don't like what they eat either. <laughs> Most of them smell bad. Sockeye salmon is the lowest mercury salmon. It's also got the best fatty acids because they feed primarily on small krill. The stuff keeps without refrigeration for quite a while, not several days. You can get sick from eating bad fish. But if you slide it into your, your, your laptop bag next to your laptop or just in the other part of it, you can eat that for a day or two. Two is pushing it. But if you do that, you've got all the protein and fat you need to keep running for essentially 24 hours straight. If you're looking for a few carbs, Hail Mary is available across the US. This is raw chocolate. It has a very cool ratio. If you're going to eat carbs, you're going to eat junk food, you still want fat, in my opinion. This is an equal amount of fat and, well, actually, it's 10 grams of fat and 4 grams of sugar per serving, although one of these is three of those. So I would not feel terrible about myself at all if I ate one of these for lunch in a hurry. It's a dessert. It tastes awesome. And chocolate is a health food with all kinds of anti-inflammation benefits. The final thing you need to know about is butter. Unsalted Kerrygold, this is the silver label, is the preferable one in the US. In the rest of the world, especially Asia, you want Anchor brand. The reason you choose these ones is that these cows ate grass. It's more important that they eat grass than that they're organic, because a, a cow that eats organic corn and organic soy makes organic crap butter that you don't want to eat. That's inflammatory. <laughs> the stuff tastes good. It's actually yellow naturally. And I go through a ton of this. In fact, you can use it in ice cream. All right, where did I put my remote control? There we go. Learning to use your body. You have muscles you don't know how to control, a ton of them, along your spine, the back of your arm. When you do multiple compound movements, you'll oftentimes find some. But we also store emotional tension in muscles. And if you have a muscle that's tense all the time, it might be tense because of something that happened to you when you were 12 months old. And you have no conscious recollection of this. The way our brain works, you have a brain stem, and it's a pattern matching machine. And it will match patterns in microseconds when your conscious brain takes about a third of a second to look at someone. What that means is that if a guy in rose-colored glasses beat you up in second grade, your reptilian brain says, pattern match, rose glasses, threat, and you get the physiological threat response. You, you bear the stress burden of that, whether or not you have any conscious knowledge of it. So your conscious brain says, oh, that's the speaker. I got nothing to worry about. But your heartbeat already changed. Your respiration already changed. You actually got a, a thin sheen of sweat on your skin that changed the resistance on your skin because you prepared to either fight me or run away from me. You need to get on top of that, and we're going to talk about how to do that. Figuring out how to control your muscles is one of the ways you do it. 
First, you need to learn how to relax these muscles, and then you can get them stronger. Strengthening this muscle when you don't have control of some other muscle over here is not going to lead to an optimal result. In fact, you might even get an injury that way. You can use basically something called EMG or GSR to a certain extent to control your, uh, to, to measure certain muscles. You can't even reach all of your muscles with sensors though, which is why things like yoga or functional movement will be helpful. For me, I use yoga. A lot of people use functional movement where you bend forward, for instance, and you figure out which arm is stretching more than the other, and then you do specific corrective exercises. I'm actually still doing some work in that space. If you do this, you'll be able to dance better. You'll be able to, to stand more uh, appropriately, have a straighter posture. A straighter posture makes you more attractive. And it essentially makes you more functional on many levels, including cognitively. Having wire, your brain wired to all of your muscles makes your brain work better. You need to learn how to breathe. Most people breathe shallowly from up here. You want to send a signal that you're relaxed? You breathe from your stomach down here. And most people just haven't learned to make it a habit. So specific breathing exercises can transform your nervous system function as well as make you feel good. I recommend something called Art of Living. Art of Living is practiced by 25 million people around the globe. It's a set of exercises you do for about 10 or 15 minutes in the morning. They, when they teach it, you know, oftentimes the teacher wears white robes. The first time I took it, I was in my mid-20s, and I thought it was kind of the dumbest thing ever because, frankly, incense, white robes, flowers, like, not my thing. My grandmother has a, a PhD in nuclear engineering. She met my grandfather on the Manhattan Project. I'm as Western scientific as it gets. So I didn't connect with it. The second time I took it, it was a different class for executives. Is it one of the early executives from Intel at his sprawling mansion? He said, oh yeah, I'm having this training in the back. It was taught by a venture capitalist named uh, John Roberts from Santa Barbara. And I sat in there and I finally connected. All right, if I just do this and I just suspend my disbelief and say, I'm going to experiment. Six weeks, I'll do the exercise. And at the end of six weeks, I'm like, holy crap. Life is better. I've actually lost weight. But everything got easier. Everything that I do. For several years after that, every Saturday morning, I would meet with a group of hyper successful entrepreneurs in one of their, basically their basements in their mansion. And Saturday, 7 a.m., we'd get together and we'd do breathing exercises for about 45 minutes together. I think if I look back on it, there was somewhere between 100 million and 500 million of net worth in that room among those dozen to tw maybe 10 or 20 people that were there. That's pretty amazing. Why would these very successful people who frankly could do whatever they wanted spend 45 minutes on a Saturday morning doing this? Because it works. That's why we did it. You can go to a yoga teacher and learn pranayama. That'll help too. The trick is daily practice for six weeks.